Hello everybody, and welcome to Scale Modeling with Mike Ashey. This tutorial is part one on ship assembly techniques. Visit us at www.mikeashey.com, and this tutorial is brought to you by Mike Ashey Publishing. Study the parts trees to determine the best way to remove the parts. I like to use cutters to cut through thick plastic trees, and I use snippers to cut through the connection points between parts and the trees if the plastic is thin. The connection point between these parts and the trees are flat, so I position the snippers along its long length to cut through the plastic. Leaving some of the stub on the part makes it much easier to carefully trim the part and sand the surface smooth. The attachment points on this part are thick, so it's best to cut the part free from the tree first. Snippers won't work due to the thickness of the plastic, so trim as much of the stub off, leaving a little bit on the part. The remaining stub can then be sliced off with a number 11 X-Acto blade. The attachment points on this Beaufort barrel are thin and flat. The delicate barrel attachment point should be cut first with snippers and then the larger attachment point at the gun space. The stubs on the parts could then be carefully sliced off with the tip of a number 11 X-Acto blade. Note how the snipper is positioned on the long flat side of the stub. Careful positioning helps prevent damage to the surface of the part. The four stubs on this part were carefully snipped off. A number 11 X-Acto knife was used to carefully slice off the excess and then a sanding stick was used to smooth the surface of the plastic. To help slice off any remaining stubs, elevate the part on a small wood block. Position the stub as close to the surface as possible and then slice the stub off. Sometimes attachment points are so thick that no matter how careful you are at removing the stub, the surface of the part gets damaged. To repair these areas, place a few drops of superglue onto the damaged area and then sand it smooth. Since this is a curved surface, use a flexible to prevent flattening out the surface. To ensure parts have flat surfaces, wet sand them by running them across a stationary piece of sandpaper. After scraping the mold line off on this part, it was rotated inside a length of sandpaper to restore its round shape. Mold punch outs on parts can sometimes be filled with discs made using a punch tool. The discs are super glued into place and then the surface is sanded smooth. To remove the mold lines on this part, I used a number 11 X-Acto blade held at about a 45 degree angle. To smooth out the surfaces that have raised detail, you can modify a sanding stick to get into the areas between the raised detail. The tree connection points on this part are thick and the mold line runs across the middle surface of the part. Careful scraping, cutting, shaping and sanding restored the surface of the part. Marking and test fitting parts helps ensure that everything fits together correctly. To get a better fit with this part, the positioning tabs were removed and the surface was sanded smooth. Surface detail on kits made from slide molding sometimes have petite, thin raised lines where the slide molding parts come together. Check the part surfaces carefully and carefully scrape and sand smooth these imperfections. The hole on the other side of this part was filled with a length of plastic rod super glued into place. The area was then trimmed and scraped smooth. Sometimes there are so many mole punch outs 
that filling them is hard to do. They can also be located in areas that would damage the surrounding surfaces if you filled the mold punch outs. In these cases, hide them by gluing thin strips of plastic cut and shaped with a northwest short line chopper. Superstructure subassemblies should be taped together to check the fit and ensure that there are no void issues. Ship models, hull, deck, and superstructure parts and assemblies should all be taped together to ensure that everything fits tightly and to check for voids and fit problems. Make notes on any identified issues on the kit's instructions. This phase of test fitting is an outstanding scale modeling technique that allows you to identify and correct the issues in the early stages of your project. The hangar deck superstructure sides on this Trumpeter Essex class carrier were taped into place and numerous fit problems were identified and corrected. The X's on the roller doors identify those roller doors that will be opened up. The Tamiya Missouri is a great kit as old as it is, and a pre-assembly check helped identify all the issues. The superstructure void will need to be corrected, and the step in the deck and the superstructure side will also need to be fixed. During the test fitting phase of this, of this Tamiya, Missouri, this void was discovered between the forward deck and the center deck sections on both the port and starboard side. Finding these types of issues before you start assembling your model affords you the time to think about how you want to fix it. Many of the trumpeter scale ships have separate upper and lower hulls, and the lower hull is usually slightly longer. A simple solution is to cut the lower hull. The excess length is almost the exact width of a saw blade. The lower hull parts were then positioned on the upper hull, and several layers of superglue sealed the seam. Many large scale kits have thin plastic hulls. To prevent them from flexing and cracking a seam, laminate strips of plastic to the inside area of the hull with superglue to add strength. To add strength to multiple piece deck sections, glue a length of plastic under each deck section. Single piece hulls that were created with slide molding have thin lines across the surfaces where the slide molding came together. Mark these lines with an indelible marker so they can be wet sanded off. I like to use lamp risers which are solid turned brass pieces with threading on both ends for display pedestals. To ensure the positioning of the pedestals, measure and mark the locations from the bow and the stern. Two-piece upper and lower hulls and left and right hulls should be taped together tightly and beads of superglue run across the seam lines. The capillary action of the glue will pull it into the plastic halves. Several layers may be needed to fill a seam line. Once the glue is dry, remove the tape and add glue to those areas. The whole seam line is then carefully sanded and scraped smooth. Silver paint is applied to check for flaws and then more super glue is added right over the paint. To control the sandpaper, wrap it around a length of balsa wood and wet sand to help lubricate the sandpaper reducing sanding dust and polishing the plastic as you sand. Sometimes multiple piece deck sections have connection surfaces that have indentations or they're not flat, so carefully check the edges.
Run the edges of the deck sections across a stationary piece of sandpaper to flatten the gluing surfaces so that you will get a very tight fit between the deck parts. Now that the edges are straight, they fit together tightly. A tiny bead of super glue was applied with a thin, stiff wire along the seam line. The seam was then carefully scraped with an X-Acto stencil knife, which has a very small tip, and then silver paint was applied along the seam line to check for flaws. The deck seam on this large flight deck was reinforced on the underside along the seam lines. Note the small section that has to be removed. This was identified as a fit problem during the tape-up phase and rechecked once the superstructure side for the hangar deck was completed as well as the flight deck. This deck section from the Alaska kit has its underside reinforced with a, with a section of plastic before the deck sections were glued together. With the underside of this deck seam reinforced, the seam was super glued, carefully sanded, and now the deck deal detail is being restored. Be sure that when you glue the deck sections together, the wood detail lines up. The Alaska kit has two deck sections. Both were positioned in place and secured with lots of tape. A bead of super glue was applied along the seam line and between the tape with a stiff wire. The capillary action of the super glue pulled the glue down between the deck and the inside area of the hull. Several applications were necessary to get the tiny voids between the edge of the deck and the hull filled. Once the glue is dried, remove the tape. And get those areas that were under the tape with as many applications of super glue that are necessary. This ends part one of Mike Ashey's tutorial on ship construction techniques. Be sure to check out part two.